Australia should not become a prison house where you're held hostage the rest of your life by your mistakes. That's not God's voice. That's not God's will. That's not God's plan for you. Mistakes are the price for a full life that you have to pay if you learn from them. I believe that hell wants to maim you and mock you with your mistakes. But heaven wants to make you and transform you by your mistakes. The enemy wants us to think that our failure is final because we go through things where the enemy tries to take us out by a failure or a mistake or a terrible choice. I want somebody to hear me clearly. You might have made a mistake, but you're not one. You might have failed, but you're not a failure. You might be down, but down is not your destiny. There is a resurrection coming to your dreams, to your life, to your call, to your purpose. You experimented with drugs and alcohol, and now you're addicted. You had to try, and now you've lost your purity or your virginity. If you could go back, you would give anything to go back and change that night or that place or that situation that changed everything in your life. You might have fallen and you might have failed and you might have made a mistake, but you're not a mistake and God will never define you by the worst mistake and choice you made in life. Critics will, attackers will, haters will, people will, but God will never define you by your worst mistake. We need to thank him that great is his mercy towards us and for his loving kindness in our lives. The Lord is saying, when I get through with you, you're not going to look like what you've been through. You're not going to look like abuse. You're not going to look like a failure. You're not going to look like a mistake. You're not going to look like a bad choice. See what he paid and what he went through so we can have this. But he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your inequities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him and by his stripes, you are healed. You are whole. You are restored. God is saying, I still have plans for your life. And they'll see this. But because of what you've been through, you'll learn to praise me in your pain. Anybody can praise him when everything is perfect. But when you learn to praise God when your life looks like this, I promise you, he'll turn your weeping into dancing and he'll restore the dream. What you went through in the past was just a stepping stone to where God is about to take you. In fact, there is a blessing to your mistake. If you can start seeing that mistake as God's plan to your destiny, maybe you will begin to trust in him and ask him to come help you out. Your mistakes don't scare God. He is all-knowing and the Almighty. Mistakes to him are nothing. Through the Bible, he has shown us that he still blesses, uses and promotes those with mistakes. So don't look on your mistakes, look on God. Don't give your mistakes the attention, let God take the attention instead. Grace is God's undeserved favour. It's God's doing something for people who don't deserve it at all. If he did that for us while we were still sinners and didn't even care about him at all, how much more now that we have received Christ will we be daily delivered from sin's dominion? So if Jesus did that for us before we even cared, what all is he willing to do for a bunch of people like you? If God would send his son to die for you before you even cared about him, what would he be willing to do for you now? But we do without a lot because we're not bold enough to press in and ask for the very best that God has for us. You can never ask God for too much. I said, you can never ask God for too much. You don't have to be careful about asking for too much. Undeserved favor. We all love it when somebody does us a favor. It's beautiful, undeserved favor. But there's another part of the definition of grace that was quite life-changing for me. I had heard the part about undeserved favor. I knew that it was God doing something for me I didn't deserve. When you let God take over, everything becomes new. Your mistakes are all gone. Well, you might be saying, I have done this and I've done that. Nobody trusts me and I've gone too far. Believe me, there is nothing like gone too far when it comes to God. Your mistakes don't matter to him. Your past doesn't matter to him. If and only you learn to trust in him and ask him to lead you through it.
Your mistakes sometimes is what qualifies you for a greater blessing. Do you remember that the Apostle Paul had been the one against the children of God? He had a past, but God had a future for him. God is greater than any past you have. He's greater than anything you've been through. I'm sure there are many of you here. You really love God. You care about Him. You have no intentions of ever walking away from God. You still are very frustrated. There's a lot of struggle in your life, a lot of confusion. Perhaps you don't have the joy that you know that you should have. And truth be told, you don't even really enjoy a great deal of God's peace. And I have a lot of concern for believers who have no victory. The reason for not having victory most of the time is because you've been trying to fix it on your own. When are you going to let God get into that mess? Why not allow Jesus to come fix whatever it is you're going through right now? Are you not tired of trying on your own? Remember, the Bible says that it is not by power nor by might, but by His Spirit. The Spirit can change anything. There is power when we call on the name of Christ. He is the Lord of everything, and nothing is ever too hard for Him to fix. Quit crying about it. Quit complaining about it. Don't even tell your friends or family about it. They might turn their backs, but God will not. He is a loving God, and He specializes in fixing every and anything. Being a believer in Jesus Christ is not about just claiming some certain brand of religion and going to church every week. I'm all for going to church every week, but we just have to get through our head that there's more to it than I go to church. Jesus is the center of our lives, and we need to stay plugged in. But I want you to understand that grace is undeserved favor. So, God's power to live that life out and walk it out in such a way that not only can we enjoy our journey, and I mean have a wonderful life, but we can be a witness everywhere that we go. God not only saves us, but He gives us everything that we need. Everything. Let me tell you something. God never calls you to do something and doesn't give you what you need to do it. God never puts you in a place without giving you what you need to be there. Now grace is available to all. Every single person that has ever lived on the planet has the same opportunity to have a victorious life. Every single person has an opportunity to have their sins forgiven and have a great relationship with God and the promise of eternal life. Every person, no matter what your situation is, there's grace available to you for your situation. And I felt very strongly that I was to press this point that if you think you are a special case, God will give you a special grace. There is special grace for the special cases today. If you give Him a chance today to write your story and correct every of your past mistakes so you can have a glorious life, God is always waiting for each of us. He knows we need Him and He knows our weaknesses. Stop blaming yourself. Stop crying in the secret. I think it's time to start running towards God and trust in Him more than ever. Remember the psalmist said that He is our strong tower and our shelter. It means that He protects you from getting hurt, from evil and saving you from every adversity. Today is another opportunity for you to decide which way you want to go. Leave it to go and ask Him to take care of it or try fixing it yourself. But I'm glad you've made the right decision and you know God will never leave you the same way you came. Amen.